that's what I'm loading. So I'm next to a Quebec guy. He has a, I don't know, 55, 60 ton. It's a Talbert. The neck looks pretty big and he has a tandem Jeep. Because Quebec is still on uh, Degel, uh, Frost Lodge. See, it has a drop side rail and it's a modular trailer. Uh, kind of like mine, except in the front he has no ramp. Like, but that's exactly the machine I'm getting. 980M uh, wheel loader. And you see, he, he's loading like this, the bucket facing forward, asking why. And he says, because. Quebec is still on frost laws and so that's why you need so many axles and he says over here you only get like 46.5 46 pounds on the try them and over there you get 17 thousand per axle on the Jeep and 17 per axle on the truck so he needs more weight forward whereas you see this guy this guy uh, has a truck like mine except he has a he has a tandem uh, pusher, but the setup pretty much the same. But you see he's running with his flip boxes up, and this guy has a trail king. But in the back he only has three axles, and that's how I'm gonna load. You see I was checking out where he has his bucket, so he put the timber uh, where his first bolster is between axle one and two so I'm gonna put my big timber in here and he's loading see his light the turn signal is right where the cab is and that's how I'm I want to be loading too because that's the center and I asked him to check the height I said can you tell me what the height is and he has one of those fancy uh, fancy you know car hauler poles that I cannot afford they're too expensive kidding I just don't like them too much they take too much space but but he uh, his trail is a 65 ton actually 65 ton so mine should be lower I think because mine is a 60 ton right so 65 ton is much is much stronger so it should have bigger bow actually on his trail it's all flat i don't see any bow at all but he has he says that he is 14 3 overall and there's no protective cage um it's just that black um you see that black pipe goes around if that's what they mean by protective cage but it's the same as the top of the cab so my machine should be the same yeah so he's moving on seven axles because this thing only weighs like about 66 67 thousand pounds and these guys have a, the shipper has a scale here over there next to the fence and then in the distance there's a digital readout so basically you scale yourself uh, axle by axle and then just write it down beautiful so I don't have to go to a truck stop I thought I would you know because I ordered the Arkansas permit blind without seeing or measuring the machine right so now I'm gonna I'm gonna load I'm gonna check dimensions and I'm gonna go scale and this morning as I was driving I got up at uh, 5 o'clock local time uh, where was I in uh, Holiday Tennessee and from there it's four and a half hours and so I was here around 11 local time no wait a second it's 11 17 now yeah I was here like 10 40 I really did great time and my my broker was very happy I said uh, uh, we load today instead of Thursday and he's like oh cool so and that's what I want you see that's the deck I want it would work really great on this 60 ton where I didn't like it with a 55 ton because you know I was doing a lot of uh, small loads and that deck can be a detriment when you're trying to move 
you know like a small dozer or let's say a roller or actually even this even this uh, uh, brawn drainage plow that I, I just moved it would be challenging with this because you know that that knife you have to pack it you still have to pack it outside right and if you have a raised center you know that blade would have to sit higher and like on a 55 ton the um, the center was at 23 inches I still remember 23 and the sides were according to the marketing booklet 14.5 but I could never I could never make it that low because that's that's designed for a fifth that's you know your fully loaded deck height so you need to have 55 tons on the deck to achieve that but with regular loads what I, I was able to do with you know seven eight axles I think I was about 16 16 inches which is still excellent right so so that's the thing basically uh, and when you arrive here uh, on the side of the building there there's a little cart and there's a there's a check-in sheet and they ask you all kinds of questions you have to write your serial number or whatever your name of your company and i was really proud to write sergey drachev that's my company who do you work for you know they always ask me like who do you work for so, i work for myself no what does it say on the side of your truck i said sergey drachev because that's the legal name of my company it's my full name very convenient you can use your personal account when people give you checks you don't even need to be registered like you know i do have a business license just because i want to use uh, dba doing business as right so i registered uh sergey drachev heavy hole right and that's what on the side of my door but the legal name of the company is still my full name with no heavy hole just Sergey Drachev but now I got a business account and so now I can I can cash checks written to either 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 my full name or my DBA so anyway lots of airplanes over here flying around and so I checked in and they said, yeah, just break, uh, break down, separate your trailer and just sit tight. Somebody will be with you momentarily. All right, sir. And of course, nobody's wearing any masks. Uh, oh, and one uh, cool news of the day is that... Hold on, I bought a new, I bought a new headset. So this was the charger this black and white it was the charger from my old headset and it just started falling down I mean falling apart see I've been using this for probably five years and it, it this one is a blue parrot b250 xt plus and you see you have you have this very thin metal thing so it's kind of like a bit irritating unless you have a baseball hat and then this started separating like the um, this thing over here started separating falling apart <laughs> and I said what the heck am I doing you know like time to get a new one so this morning I stopped in uh, West Memphis at the pilot and I'm just gonna throw that out and I looked at what they had and now I have this beauty check this out wow so this is much more convenient of the, because of this and it has you see it has this soft material over here so I don't have to wear baseball hat anymore and it's so soft and comfortable and of course you see the earpiece is much bigger and this is the same blue parrot because i i trust this brand but this one is uh, i think it's called 450 450 so this was 169 bucks and i i already used it made a couple of test calls everything works great and i paired it with my uh, us phone 
and uh, this is uh, what is this Samsung from Verizon because you know uh, Verizon I find that Verizon works better in uh, in southern and western US like especially like Iowa I cannot make my Canadian phone work because over here they switch to AT&T and there's like no signal in Iowa Nebraska over there but Verizon works much better and so yeah I'm really happy with this because you know first of all it's the law right you cannot use a handheld phone and then you're driving people keep calling you hey can I give us a quote you know hey I'm driving over here you know but you gotta answer otherwise you know I'm not I'm I don't believe in voicemail so all my phones I tell them kill the voicemail and I said I want people to call me and I don't want I don't want them to hear any greeting you know like hey the mailbox you're calling has not been set up yet or the mailbox is full no I said I want the phone to keep ringing you know and then just stop and so if they if I want to call them back you know everybody has a caller ID I can see the number and just call them back you know what's the this voicemail it's so irritating you have to dial the number punch in your password you know and then somebody's like just drop the the phone nobody you know left a message but it still shows you have like 10 messages right and then you go there and each message is beep 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 you know or, hey you know you want to make your 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 tool bigger you know call us we'll make your tool two inches bigger you know like something completely job unrelated and so I have no voicemail I guess those are the news so where the heck is my machine you know I have to get out of here because this is North Little Rock and North Little Rock has a curfew from four o'clock and so now it's 11 25 so let's say I need an hour uh, maybe an hour to load because this one is relatively easy so it's 66,000 pounds so I'm gonna use what uh, two chains on the front two in the back that's already 40,000 pounds and then you need two in the middle uh, one on the bucket you know stuff like that and my neighbor seems to be having some issues with his uh, connectors over there connectors on the Jeep he's doing some Maybe he's modifying the Jeep to make it a triaxle or something. I don't know. But I ask him, hey, are you from Quebec? He says, no, I work for these guys. But he says, I just have a truck. So he just, that's a typical owner operator. And we started talking about trailers. And he says, yeah, that's why I don't want to own my own trailer. He says, I just, I'm just pulling their trailer. And the problem with that is that when you're just an owner operator and you just use the company's trailer, on the one hand of course yeah it's much cheaper for you in terms of maintenance right you don't care about the trailer you can do like 90 degree turns I mean 180 degree u-turns as most company drivers do at the, at the truck stop you don't care about tires you don't care about annual safety checks right but then they always pay you a much lower percentage you know like I remember Landstar if you just have a truck and you're using their trailer it was like 64 or 65 percent which is like totally ridiculous but if you have your own trailer it was 74 percent if your trailer is a tridem or a quad 74 percent which is still daytime robbery if you ask me because you still have to pay for insurance you still have to pay no you have uh, yeah they still charge you for the plate except of course the plate is much cheaper like my plates are ridiculous my insurance is ridiculous so plates are to give you guys an example i think i talked about this but in canadian funds my annual plate is uh i think it's like 33 or 3400 bucks canadian and my insurance is 2350 canadian whereas with landstar i'm pretty sure my plate was like 800 bucks us a year because I was using Landstar plate from Illinois and my insurance was depending on the how many you know miles I did it was anywhere between seven to eight hundred 
bucks. But back then I only had a step deck trailer, right? And as soon as I bought a low boy, they kicked me out. So I, I, I cannot compare with with the rate I would have received if I, if I was doing these high value loads. But yeah, when you're independent, you know, you cannot use a fleet rate. It's all on me. And of course my truck and trailer are relatively new. And so that also affects the rate, right? When you have an old trailer, it's cheaper. And so, uh, so yeah, insurance is expensive when you're independent. But I'm I'm super happy. I'm telling you, I would never go back to work for anybody else. I like the power of being able to negotiate directly with brokers. You know, I'm the guy who talks money. I can ask for more money. You know, if I want to get somewhere fast, I can take less money. Uh, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. I decide what goes on this. You know, and I'm the guy who has the power to create invoices, very important, and bills of lading. You know, I remember once somebody told me that he says, uh, uh, you really need to be able to create your own bills of lading. That's when you start making serious money. Basically, when your name is on the bill of lading as, as the carrier, you know, not some, you know, Tom's trucking, but it's your trucking company that's that's the real freedom forget that bs freedom that landstar advertises what kind of freedom is that when they take like 40 percent from your income you know from from the revenue all right i see the guy i see i think i talked to that guy uh, whether in a, a safety vest i go show him my bill of lading see if they can finally bring out my machine so i can start chaining and start making money come on Quebec is still you know moving his machine 20 times you know because again Quebec now has super low axle limits right and see how he moved the machine all the way to the front because he cannot have more than 46,500 on the rear which is ridiculous 
and that's why of course I think you need uh, he needs one more axle in the back um, and he has no pusher you see so basically yeah now it's springtime you know and some guy showed up there another guy showed up he just has a regular uh, three axle truck and he's from Cambridge Ontario I know that company and he has a um, mechanical trailer it hurts me to, to watch these guys unhook and rehook where everything takes too much longer two times uh, two times longer but the good news of the day is that I went on the scale and check this out so this is my permit this is what I got on my permit 18.5 on the front 17.8 uh, on the pusher and then 17.8 on the drives and but this is Arkansas so on the quad they only give you 17 for axle so 68 but check this out I'm that plate over there they have a single plate so pretty much only uh, I was able to measure these three axles together but the last one was kind of tricky so I did the first two see 2F means two front and then two rear and they were pretty close basically just over 30,000 so that means that I'm 61,000 where I'm allowed 68 you know so which is pretty cool so my so that's why my next permit i don't have to order for so much weight as i did here i did uh, i ordered four hundred forty thousand gross so so now basically i gotta check dimensions see more guys are coming at the end of the day it's now it's 110 these guys are closing at three so we still have time but i gotta get out of here because then well it's still three hours to the curfew all right hold on so let's see what are we what's my actual gross weight so 16 six four zero what one six six four zero plus four eight four six zero plus three zero four six zero that's the first tandem on the trailer and the second one one twenty six three hundred one twenty six three hundred wow so minus empty weight of sixty yeah so wow they didn't lie so this machine is 66 i think my paperwork says 66 350 oh wait a second is that the first guy huh i think it was the same guy who was before me here this morning with his 65 ton so i guess he was just moving this to their to the yard because this is ats you see trail king and this guy has uh he has a freight liner huge axle in the front just like mine maybe even bigger so anyway so this machine weighs 66,300 pounds all right so the weights are verified now i just need to verify the dimensions make sure all my chains are tight cover the exhaust and then order the rest the rest of the permits and then we can go so the plan for the day is just get out of North Little Rock maybe I should go for a swim oh maybe next time Because I got one hour till curfew so it's uh, four o'clock Eastern time three o'clock local curfew over here starts in uh, at four local maybe it just oh wait a second I didn't even I didn't print out my permit that's interesting Okay, hold on, let me check. 
and I'm gonna make sure okay I got it on my phone you know if they give me hard time I'll say hey I have a printer just give me two seconds and I can print it out So yeah, 11 fire that's you know that's perfect I like it when it's under 12 and it's getting hot come on Hon no Hyundai of course all right now we have to wait for this guy well, looks like he's uh, he's letting me go. Thank you, buddy. Okay, where are we turning? 40. So basically I have a one detour, only one detour. So basically four, I, my permit is actually 14.5 and I think that's what I am. I am 14.5 because I'm in position two on the neck. But once I'm on the freeway, I can drop it to, to position one, but then it will be like almost touching. Okay, so now we gotta go to uh, 440 East. 440 East and then jump on 40 and then there's a love truck stop there's a love truck stop in uh, I think it's called Hazel or Hazen something like that truck stop uh, right there and I have to take that exit because that's why my little detour begins so basically they want me to go on that I forget 62 whatever like that highway that goes past loves I have to take that highway and then uh, leave I-40 So I'm going south and just catch a, a highway called 70 and then I follow that 70 basically parallel to I-40 and then I jump back on 40 maybe I don't know 10 15 miles east uh, via uh, highway 33 so there's probably a couple of uh, low bridges or maybe there's some kind of construction or something like that. But yeah, compared to that, compared to that brawn drainage plow, so this is uh, seven inches more narrow. So. This is like a walk in the park. And it's not heavy, but actually they were, the bill of lading, you know, I went through the scale, that place has a small scale, but it's free. 
and I just had to scale uh, each axle group separately and then the rear I had to scale twice and uh, and so I know this machine weighs 63,500 pounds So basically a perfect a perfect trailer for this machine would be a 35 ton a 35 ton trailer I don't know three axles or two in the back well probably three uh, but you see the good thing about those light trailers that normally they're very low like I know you can get okay the Fontaine doesn't have a 35 ton but they have like a 30 ton that one you can get 12 inches loaded you know and that's the big advantage of uh, light light uh, trailers is that they're very low okay I see there's lobs in here but I don't want this I want the next one, which is uh, Highway 11. I don't think it's Highway 11. All right, so it's exit 193. One nine. exit 193 not sure why it says take the exit for highway 11 it should be uh, US 63 This was a bit challenging because of that guy over there. I'm pretty sure he's not supposed to park there, but you know, what do you do? I park like that myself many times, but uh, see where his rear axle is, he's right next to uh, no parking. So, you know, and he parked on the corner. And so here I got lucky that there's two spots together. And then there's this guy in a pickup truck who is much shorter than a regular truck right but of course I cannot just stay hooked and so I started backing and then I was coming too close to the trailer you know like your tra when you break your truck create an angle the rear of my truck was uh, going into the trailer so I have to pull forward there's 20 trucks going back and forth like unbelievable it's so busy here right now look at this guy see like that guy is backing that guy is trying to pass like there's gonna be an accident now um, but this guy this nice guy in a ram truck he saw me I was backing close to him he backed uh, to the curb but also what happened is that you know uh, I was checking my right mirror uh, every few seconds afraid that I'm gonna hit that guy you know that little auto trailer and then I see I look at my uh, plastic fenders I see for some reason my plastic fender occupies half of the of the mirror in the right on the right side I'm like wait a second is that supposed to be like that and then I you know I kind of like 
stretch my neck a little bit and I see that my fender is like this and you know why because it's it's a rush 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 and it's still a heavy load and what happens with these trucks when you're backing right you're supposed to raise your uh, lift axle well you cannot back with with this one because it will start dragging on the pavement because it 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 cannot turn when you go in reverse it starts basically creating crazy angles and so but as soon as i lift it because of this now extra weight the truck became too low and it was it was touching let me go show you it started touching the fender started touching the fender and it hit that rear fender you see like that that's that damage by the neck and it was so low that the neck really pushed it you know it pushed it it was sitting like this and I think I broke one uh, knot in there but it was sitting like this so what I did I got out my uh, toolbox and I have a key see all we have to do is just unscrew this little bolt Right, and then I sprayed some um, grease on these and then you can just slide it back and forth. Once these are released, this whole thing, I can take it off. And But that one, you see, like this one has no marks. This one on the right side has a mark when uh, I moved the fifth wheel too close here and at the turn it hit this side on the, on the other fender. But this one is always causing me trouble because you see there's like a wave in there in the neck and when you have a heavy load and sometimes you forget to raise your um, you know raise your neck right and so that's after I fix that I nail I hammered it back in place and then tighten those screws everything is good except that yeah I, I broke like this one is missing on the other side I think it just broke off because the whole thing was sitting like this and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to raise your neck you know from let's say position two raise it to position three or position four but that's what i had to do i was watching my mirrors very carefully you know but my my left side is right on the yellow line i asked the guy i said are you okay like this he says yeah i said you can you can leave in the morning right he says yeah and i just wanted to show you briefly so how i tie it down so that's what i did over here and then uh, two chains like this using my favorite blue binders and then one chain in the middle piece of rubber in there and of course this has to be locked because it's an articulated machine and that's where the battery uh, master switch is so it's disconnected and then I got two chains in here and I like doing doing them like that so this way it's not damaging anything but you see it's it's between these and so it prevents the machine from rocking you know very useful when you do it like this and then I checked that there's no uh, brake lines or any any kind of uh, cables uh, on that axle and I did it like this because I got gearings in there right and then like I mentioned the, the biggest problem I had with these uh, I tried to put the shackle in here and nothing worked it just didn't want to connect properly and so I just did these oh and I gotta put the air back because you know I I could not I wasn't able to turn with the air in the last two axles and so what I did I, I dropped the air in the last two axles and so the the trailer started turning really sharp And that was the only way I could make this this work. And you see how I parked? I just parked a little bit like this. I couldn't make it too close because again, that guy with the trailer is, you know, I need more room to move this way. But I was able to create the space for my truck. So which is perfect. So I'm not sticking out too much. So nobody's gonna hit me, hopefully. I'm shutting down. Uh, we'll continue the trip tomorrow. Uh, permits are ordered. 
but again so far i only have the arkansas oh yeah this one you see this so this one broke off together with the you know the threading is supposed to be there right now it's just plastic maybe i can stop by fontaine and ask him to uh, give me that little threading but yeah so now this is tight that one is tight i don't know it should work all right have a good night boys and girls thanks for watching